So a little bit about displacements. As we've discussed, stress causes strains and strains when integrated over the length of the axially loaded member exhibit a displacement, often denoted by the Greek letter delta. In order to resolve for displacements, let's look at what we know already. We have a definition for strain, delta over L. We have a definition for stress, the load P divided by the cross-sectional area A. And we have Hooke's law, which is the relationship between stress and strain, i.e. the Young's modulus E is equal to stress divided by strain. Now let's combine these by substituting in the equations for stress and strain into Hooke's law and rearranging the equation to solve for displacement. In this way, we derive a basic design equation, uh, which will calculate the displacement caused by a uniform axial load on a member. Remember, it assumes the linear elasticity because of Hooke's law. Let's look at an example application of the basic design equation for a stepped bar supporting two externally applied loads, as shown. I've rewritten the design equation to show it as a piecewise sum of the component bits. Note that P is the internal force applied over the length and not the externally applied forces. You must use the method of section successively to determine the internal forces in the various component parts. Let's start by looking at the topmost part between A and B and applying our method of sections. We cut the member, discard the lower section and replace it with an internal force P1. We can then use equilibri equilibrium to solve for this force, which acts between A and B, there being no other forces applied in the area. We now do the method of sections one more time to determine the internal force between B and C in the same manner. I would then strongly suggest you draw an axial force diagram for the full structure. The axial force diagram is a diagram which plots the value of the internal force, an internal axial force, over the length of the member. I will orient this one vertical so you can see how it aligns with the member. We will use the horizontal axis to note the value of the axial force. So let's start at the bottom and draw it in. It is constant between C and B uh, with a value of negative PA plus PB and then a discontinuity of B where PB is applied with a constant force negative PA between B and A. It is worth noting that the values of change in the two parts of the axial force diagram is equal to the point loads applied with a similar observation at both ends. We can now use the internal forces, ideally taken from your axial force diagram, to solve the piecewise displacements over length one and length two and sum them together to get the total displacement at the end A. This slide is shown to demonstrate that while we have simplified our design equation into discontinuous constant components, that is a simplification. We can use calculus uh, using the integral, integral form of the equation and substitute in equations for force and area if necessary to determine the displacements for complex components. As a class example, this problem is solved in component parts at the various links. We then go on to look at this stepped bar example. Again, follow the link so that you can see the solution done out in long form. Finally, as it pertains to displacements, we will look at this slightly more complicated structure and look for the axial displacements in the vertical bar ABC. Again, follow the, solve, or the link to see a solved uh, solution to this problem. 